Hello and welcome, I'm Bert the Stormtrooper, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Earthrise War for Cybertron Cliff Jumper, and I love this toy. But before we do, if you haven't done so already, please take a moment to consider subscribing to the channel. It won't cost you anything, but it'll help me and it'll help the channel grow. Also, hit that notification bell so you're notified when I upload a new video, and of course, come back and check out the channel often. I upload one to two videos a week, sometimes more. Finally, if you'd like to help out the channel further, I have placed a donate button up at the top banner. If you want to click on that, I would certainly appreciate it. So here we have Cliff Jumper in the package, and he is brand new, released in February of 2020. He is starting to hit retail stores right now as of the time of this recording. He is marked as a deluxe figure and is retailing for approximately $20, which I don't really agree with. I mean, I don't like the fact that deluxe figures have gone up to $20 for starters. I already don't like that. Um, Cliff Jumper seems a little small to be market more marked up as a uh, deluxe figure. Um, I, it's kind of like a, a, a basic class maybe, or a scout class. If you guys remember those, uh, he's a little bigger than that, but he's, he's a little too small. I think in my opinion, to be a deluxe figure. But anyway, that's that's what we're getting. Now the figure is fantastic. Real quick, just to kind of look at the box so you can see what the new Earthrise box looks like. We've got the artwork for Cliff Jumper right here on the side. We've got some really cool Earthrise artwork right there on the back, or on this other side rather. And then on the back, we've got product shots of Cliff Jumper in both his vehicle and his robot modes. And then of course in the front, we've got the window box with Cliff Jumper displayed in his robot mode so let's get this guy out of the box and check him out and here we have wheeljack out of the package and real quick just to see what he comes packaged with he does come with his set of instructions his uh, bazooka and of course his decoder so that we can go in here in the little insert and look for his planet and uh, this one gets really dark he is a uh, dead universe i don't know if that's <laughs> Through my camera, but man, that is dark. There it is, Dead Universe. Very, very dark. Again, I don't know what these are. I, I, I don't know what the game is. I don't know how this works. I just know that there's a decoder and you find a planet, and uh, that, that's all, I guess, it for, as far as I know. I don't know. Again, I think the tech specs would have been cooler. There's his instructions, very good instructions, and uh, that's about it. So here is Cliff Jumper. In his vehicle mode, very cool little car mode. It's the little hatchback sports car. Uh, it's not exactly the Porsche that we had back in the 80s, but it's a very reasonable facsimile, and I really like the way this little car looks. Again, like I said in the intro, he is a little small for a deluxe figure here in car mode. Cliff Jumper is only about four inches long and about one and a half inches tall. This is maybe like a basic or a scout figure uh, at best. It's just such a small figure. I don't see why this is being sold as a deluxe. It's a great figure, but man, it's just so small for for $20. That's that's just not a lot of toy for 20 bucks. Uh, real quick, uh, I guess we'll just, you know, he rolls very, as, as, as a car should roll, rolls fine. Uh, looking at the detail, let's get in close. So you can kind of see all the details, just most, mostly red. We got some blacks and we got some silvers there. The details are very nicely done. We got that Autobot logo right there on the hood, blue windows. And then the back is just painted there. Got some tail lights and some mufflers, not a whole lot of car showing off. So again, very good little car right here. Very awesome. Uh, he rolls, that's about all he does is going to roll. Uh, I guess real quick for comparison, here he is with G1 Cliff Jumper. So you can see what these guys look like together. There you go. All right. So let's look at this weapon. A lot to do with the weapon. So we got a bazooka here, but this also comes apart into several components. So the back here, this is going to come off and then this stretches out. Uh, as far as a weapon goes, I don't really know what this is or what it does. It's just a thing that it does. So there's that. It does have a function for vehicle mode. We're going to see that in just a moment. We're going to come here and take the... Uh, little arms apart for the supports the little bipods take those apart and then these two main gun pieces are going to split and separate so we got ourselves here two little handguns that we can use in robot mode uh, or you know if you don't want to use the bazooka you can use the two handguns or you can use the bazooka it's up to you not really sure what to do with these things in robot mode if you're using the handguns though so uh, but what are we going to do with all these pieces now here? Very cool little feature here. Kind of a, a really, kind of like a deep cuts uh, nod 
to G1 here, as you'll see in just a moment. So we're going to go underside, under, under the, or to the underside of the vehicle. We got two little tabs right back here. We got two little peg holes right back here. So we're just going to go ahead and tab those right in there. Get that lined up. And get that tabbed into place. I am not lined up. I said line up, so line up. There we go. So we're going to peg that in right there, just like that. Now, we're going to take the handguns here. If you take a look at the handguns, on one side of the handle, I'll try and get that in there, focus, focus. On one side of the handle, the guns are going to have a slot, and on the other side, they are not. Okay, so you're looking for the side that has the slot. Come underneath the car, you're going to see these two little tabs here. So you're going to place the guns on those, those slots on the handles are going to go into those tabs in such a way that the guns themselves or the tubes or the body of the gun are sticking out to the side of the vehicle. Hard to keep in focus on something this small when it's this close. So we're going to tab those in there. And then finally, we're going to grab the bipod legs. And the bipod legs have these two little tabs here on the sides. And we're going to go into these two slots right here in such a way that the bipod leg is sitting under the wheel so that we're turning these into skids. And there we go. So now we have kind of like this, this turbo or this, um, I guess, I don't know, jet powered, <laughs> turbocharged uh, sled mode or all terrain mode for cliff jumper. Now, if you're not familiar, there was an episode of G1 where uh, Cliff Jumper and some of the other Autobots were actually uh, driving. Uh, I think it was in New York. Uh, they were going across the river, I think it was. But anyway, they were going over water. Uh, and you could very clearly see on, on, on Cliff Jumper, he had some skids under his wheels. And he had some rockets off to the side and whatnot. Uh, so that's what this is. That's, that's what we're looking at here. So you can use the ski mode here to go over water or go over uh, snow. Uh, completely unnecessary, but very cool little addition, little deep cut that they did there. Since they gave us the bazooka, the bazooka is a reference to the first episode or the first three episodes where he tried to take out Megatron on his own. Uh, so that the, the fact that they gave us the bazooka and then they made the bazooka come apart and turn into the little skid mode uh, or the ski mode is really, really cool. So we'll go ahead and take these off. We're not going to put it back together into bazooka mode just yet because we want to look at these. I want to show you the, the handguns on their own. So we just set everything off to the side for now. And we've got Cliff Jumper here ready to transform. So let's get right into it. We're going to take the back piece here. This has been a bit of a controversy with a lot of fans because the whole back part of the car is going to pop out. It is pegged into the fists right here. So you kind of just kind of work it. There we go. And then this whole thing pops off. And we're going to set this off to the side for now. Reach in here. Turn this little peg around. And then we set this off to the side. So again, yeah, it's a little bit of a parts former. Um, I don't care, but a lot of people do uh, and don't quite care for this uh, all that much. So there's that. Set that off to the side. The rest of the transformation is pretty straightforward. So we're just kind of going to explode the car here. We want to go to the sides here and kind of untab the side. As you can see there, there was a little tab right there. And mine is very tight. It fits under this back quarter panel here. And uh, as you can see, that's separated from the front of the car and the other side of the car. So we'll do that on the same on the other side here and just kind of separate that. There we go. That is going to allow us to take the whole front of the car and just kind of rotate it down like that. We're going to stop here and work on the legs. So we're going to come around to the bottom here, take the front wheels and turn them over. And then the whole door and front hood of the car are going to slide over just like that. And then we're going to turn the doors and we're going to uh, turn around here to the back of the leg. There's a little tab right there. We're going to put this tab into one of the uh, holes for the wheels there like that and just kind of line it up with the wheel and there you go that's going to be the legs pretty much all done so now we're going to take these quarter panels here and we're going to split these and just kind of bring them off to the side and just kind of let them sit there for now and that's going to allow us to bring the rest of the car or the body up like so and go ahead now is a good time to turn them around at the waist take the roof of the car bring it down take the remainder of the hood of the car flip that down that's going to reveal the head bring these panels up all the way and then bring the roof back down and clip it in place like that bring the arms down and straighten them and we're pretty much done here now all all that's left to do is come around the back there we got a peg hole right there we're going to bring in this roof piece again and that peg that we turned around is going to peg in right in there just kind of line it up and there you go there 
is Cliff Jumper in robot mode, and he looks absolutely fantastic. Here in robot mode, Cliff Jumper is approximately four inches tall. Again, he's a little small. I think I've harped enough on that, but he looks amazing. That is G1 Cliff Jumper. Look at how good that looks. I'm really looking forward to see because you know it's going to happen. You know they're going to retool this. You know they're going to repaint it and make a bumblebee out of it. And I'm really looking forward to see what that's going to look like. In fact, I think that would have been a good deal for the $20 or the deluxe price point is to give us a cliff jumper and a bumblebee in one package i think that would have been the way to go but as it is there it is um yeah cliff jumper looks amazing Take, coming in close let's get him focused so you can look at the head beautiful head sculpt it's as g1 as it's gonna get i really kind of wish that we had an autobot symbol on the chest here but that would show us a, an autobot symbol in car mode on the roof that's facing the opposite direction of the one on the hood so i understand why they didn't do that uh, and then just uh, minor, minor, minor gripe here. Uh, G1 Cliff Jumper had black arms, so I kind of wish the arms would have been black. But other than that, uh, <laughs> she just looked this. This is G1 Cliff Jumper all the way around. He looks amazing. The feet are a tad big, but not really as big as they look on camera. When you get them in person, you can see they're not that big. Uh, they are a little bit, just a little bit, not as bad as they look on camera. Uh, but yeah, he does kind of uh, on camera look like he's got boat shoes there. Uh, but that's it's really not that terrible. Backpack's not too bad as the expected uh, Bumblebee slash Cliff Jumper backpack, so that doesn't look too terrible. And 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 really not a whole lot of kibble. I mean, it, yeah, I guess you can call this kibble. Uh, I call it more of a backpack because it's compressed and it's kind of uh, you know linear, so it looks good. It doesn't look like a bunch of just just crap sticking out to me. So, yeah, really, really nice. The head is on a ball joint. Got a little bit of up and down and side to side. Shoulders can go all the way around. They can go in and out. You got a rotation at the bicep. And then you have a rotation at the wrist. You have a rotation at the waist. The hips can go forward, backward, in and out. Rotation at the thigh. Bend at the knee. And you do have ankle tilt. Wide, wide, wide ankle tilt. So, whoa! That's what that post says to me. <laughs> uh, it's so early and I haven't had coffee yet. Okay, let's look. Uh, well, let's do comparison. So here is, again, G1 Cliff Jumper. So you can see what these guys look like together. The evolution of Cliff Jumper. Very, very cool. This figure won't even stand. This is the Hot Topics reissue from about uh, 20 years ago or so. Uh, and you can tell because he's, uh, it, it was a keychain, and you can tell because it's got the little hook right there for the keychain. So there you go, G1 Cliff Jumper comparison. And uh, why not? Let's go ahead and take a look at him next to Optimus Prime, also from the Earthrise line. So you can see what these guys look like together. They look fantastic, and they they uh, measure up really, really well. The proportions on the guy are perfect. Uh, it's it's a good size figure for for the character. That's the correct size for him. I just don't like that by himself. He's twenty bucks. I think he should have been either either a lower price or in a two pack with Bumblebee. So there you go. All right, let's take a look at those weapons. So real quick, I did want to show the two guns on their own. So you can just take these and plug them in. And uh, there you go. You got two guns. Which, uh, it's kind of my preferred look for this figure, honestly. Uh, I like the bazooka. I think the bazooka's cool, but it's a little cumbersome. You'll see that in a moment. I do like uh, the, the two handguns on their own. I think this looks really, really cool. Um, I saw somebody do something with this where they just kind of pegged it in back here. I think, actually, I think they did it like this. Yeah, this is how they did it. And then they just kind of had this thing sitting up here. I don't really know what purpose that... I guess it's just a way to put that away, I guess. I don't know. But that really leaves you with nothing to do with these things. So, but there you go. That's that's a configuration that you can do uh, with this figure. Now, let's get into that bazooka. Bazooka school. So let's take these off, and we'll combine all of this back together into bazooka mode. So we're gonna take. We want the long or the barrel end facing forward. So I'm gonna go with this one, and that's gonna be my front. And then just pick this guy back in here and. You want to get the uh, handles away from each other like that. Close this up, and then you can peg this in. And uh, I like to put the ridge end uh, facing up like so. Now he comes packaged with the handle off to the side like that, which is cool because you can kind of hold it like that. If you know, if you can imagine holding it like that, uh, he can't. He doesn't have the articulation for it, but it's a thing that could be done. So that's a way to pose it. Finally, we're going to take these uh, little skid parts here, and these are going to peg in right there next to that front handle. 
You can peg them in next to the back handle, but that wouldn't make any sense. Bipods are usually in the front. And there you go. There's your bazooka, which looks really, really cool. And Cliff Jumper, again, he can hold it uh, by either one of these pegs, and it looks really, really good. And again, if you're not familiar, uh, this is a reference to uh, one of the first three episodes of uh, uh, Transformers G1, uh, where Cliff Jumper tried to take Megatron out on his own with his bazooka. So there you go. Um, so, but yeah, it would be cool if he could, you know, hold it from the front here. I'll, tr I'll try it just so that you guys can see it, but turn the handle like so. Yeah, see, that, that would be cool if he could do that and then just kind of hold it. It's, he just doesn't have the articulation for it, but there you go. It's a way to, it, it's a way to go. Or since we have it like this, turn the handle back the other way. So it faces away from his head and we can turn this around. And then you can have him hold it in his shoulders, like so, which would be a more appropriate uh, hold for a bazooka. So there you go. So there's that. And in fact, I think I'm going to leave him like that because he looks like a little badass right now. <laughs> Let's get that focused in and close in. Very, very cool. I'm having a lot of fun with these Earthrise figures. They're just, uh, uh, they've knocked them out of the park so far. Minor complaints. There's always something minor that you can find to complain about, honestly. But overall, these are fantastic figures. Uh, and I'm having a lot of fun with them. And I think that about covers the Transformers Earthrise War for Cybertron Cliff Jumper. What did you think of this figure? Let me know. Give me some thumbs up. Subscribe and share with your friends if you like what you see. As always, thank you so much for watching. And I'll talk to you next time.